Welcome back to International Finance. I am Andy Kim, your Doctor Finance. Today I am taking this picture from, uh, taking this lecture from Myeongnyeondang. You know, Songgyungwan is Asia's oldest university, built in uh, 1398. And today we have extremely beautiful weather, like uh, almost no cloud in the sky, the blue sky, and then this is the queen of all seasons, May right so why don't i take you know the videos outside so that you could at least enjoy this beautiful weather in over the screen if I, if we did not have you know if we had not have this pandemic right i must have taken you out um, and then let you do some group studies in this myeongnyeondang area and just do your group discussions and come back right could have been a lot more dynamic and with much more fun, but uh, we cannot do it. But instead, at least, at least, um, let me enjoy myself and then let you see it, right? This beautiful weather and then this uh, beautiful, gorgeous place, uh, with historically meaningful one. Um, so that's my idea. And then you see, just to give you some more uh, background, this is Byeongnyeondang where all those uh, scanners were discussing those political ideas, how to you know, manage the country virtuously, and then how to make these people live better life, right? Things like that. Um, and then there you see around, we have uh, dormitory places for those scholars, young students, and then the uh, people around. And then you see some of the big trees, Jinko trees, which is the symbol of our um, university, Songgyeongwan. And then, likewise, this is a very, very beautiful place, right? Um, and you see Kukjegwan over there, International Hall, and together with it, the headquarter building of the university, right? So, very beautiful place and beautiful weather. I just cannot, you know, uh, do other ways than this, right? I hope you like my lecture today. And then today we're going to cover um, international equity market. For that part, the Coupang's IPO took place um, in March 11th, right? Almost like two months ago. And Coupang, supposedly Amazon of Korea, they say, uh, whether you agree or not, or Amazon of Asia. Um, the CEO is Korean American guy, or you know more of a Korean kind of. Um, but still, um, why did they issue their equity and float their equity shares in New York Stock Exchange instead of Korean Stock Exchange, um, or other Asian markets like Singapore Exchange or Tokyo, right? Um, why would they do it and and then ipo underpricing and ipo first day return um all these kind of things and then ipo underperformance uh, until now right that's a very interesting issues going on um so it's very exciting time to study finance in korea um together with this coupon kind of issues and then for international finance guys like you and me this is a fantastic time to study it. And then, you know, moreover, um, this Myeongnyeondang place is much more meaningful um, together with that uh, discussions, right? So wait for that, all right? See you. Likewise, we are going to cover international equity market today. Um, recently, Coupang's IPO in New York Stock Exchange was a hot issue, especially in Korea, as well as for those of you who are interested in tech stocks and, and investing in the stock market, right? Now, um, the size of it, okay, uh, was huge. The Coupang is largest foreign IPO in US since Alibaba. You know that Alibaba e-commerce company, the world's largest one, led by Jack Ma, and then gross, what you see on your horizontal axis is the gross proceeds including over allotments and billion dollars, right? Uh, when it comes to Alibaba Group Holdings, uh, which was in uh, 2014, that was $25 billion they got in cash, right? Proceeds. And General Motors, 2010, they got like $18 billion. 
How about Facebook? $16 billion. And Uber Technologies, $8 billion. Coupon, $4.55 billion. Almost like $5 billion worth, right? Of course, their market cap is, uh, was more than $100 billion on the first day of the IPO, uh, which was very amazing. I mean, Pak Juon in Korean, dollar, uh, Korean one unit, right? Amazing one. So March 11th, 2021, CPNG coupon, that's a stock ticker of coupon at New York Stock Exchange, NYSE. And what you see over here is the opening bell of NYSE. I once visited NYSE um, and then there we found an opening bell going on like that. Every day, if there is a, a company going IP, doing IPOs, right? Their CEOs and company representatives come up to this, I mean, board members, right? Um, come up to this uh, second floor, how do you say, terrace kind of place in New York Stock Exchange and then ring the bell, ding, 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 that uh, alarms, right? It's the beginning of the trading session for that morning, right? And then they clap their hands like that. That's a good big celebration. Um, and then South Korean company, or should I say South Korean company or rather American company, um, at least doing business in Asia and Korea, right? Um, they were doing it. South Korean e-commerce company Coupon made its market debut Thursday on the New York Stock Exchange through an IPO and is now trading under the ticker symbol Coupon CPNG. And then the company stock began trading at uh, $63.5 a piece, giving Coupon a market cap of $102 billion, right? Um, on the first day. And then you see that $63.5 a piece is not their IPO price. It's just first trading upshoot. Their beginning price is what you're going to see in the next slide. Um, the company was last valued in the private market uh, as a, at the $9 billion in 2018. But over two years or three years, it became like $100 billion worth. Um, evaluated by the market participants on that first day, okay? Um, and then this is basically coming from the uh, CNBC's news report. And then how is it go, uh, doing these days, right? Um, $38.9, right? So almost like $39 compared to the first day price, 63. Um, yeah, one third of it disappeared. <laughs> um, and then year-to-date stock price performance. So starting from 50-ish to 60-ish over there and have been, go been going down, okay? Below $40 range, right? Um, and then, so that's a typical movement of IPO stocks. There is an IPO underperformance after the initial day, right? And the first day, okay, compared to their, uh, your initial price, right? Um, the target, what is that? Company had priced its shares at $35 a piece. So initially at the starting point of the first day, $35, but it shot up to like a shoot up like $60 or something over here, okay? Uh, and then and then it's slowly slipping down the, down the road, okay? Um, IPO underperformance, it has been, you know, there for a long time. And then IPO, I mean, is it because of IPO underpricing is another issue there. Uh, why did they price this stock at such a low level over here? So um, uh, is it because of the marketing purpose? So that initial first day return is so huge that everybody starts to pay attention to your company. Wow, that's a sexy company. And then later on, your investor base increases and then attracts more. Uh, so that uh, by the time you do the secondary or seasonal seasoned equity offering right later on, um, then you will have a better pricing later. Um, there's a debate going on about IPOs, right? A lot of things to study over there. Anyway, coupon surged 40% in its market debut Thursday on New York Stock Exchange and making it the largest IPO so far uh, this year in the United States. There's a newspaper about that. Uh, report about it and then 
It was founded in 2010 by Pom Kim, right? Um, and then Korean American guy. And then it's guaranteed the same day or next day delivery service. Often compared to uh, Amazon or Alibaba, uh, Coupang has more than 100 fulfillment and logistic centers, blah, blah, blah. You see it, which is self evident. And then what you see over here is what? Um, Pom Kim and then Masayoshi Son, right? Son Jong the, the primary investor of this company before, right? What was that? SoftBank um, Vision Fund, right? Vision Fund made a huge money uh, thanks to this IPO, okay? Hambang right? It's like a one shot. Um, big risk taker, SoftBank Group. Um, a backed company raised this billion dollars in IPO on March 11th. You may say, why is it only $4.55 billion, not $100 billion? Didn't you say the market cap went up to like $100 billion? Yes, the market cap as a whole. Okay, let me draw a picture over here. Let me see. 100, this is 100% pie. Okay. Um, the whole pie of equity holders value market cap uh, went up to like $100 billion. But they did not launch all those 100% of the shares to the open market. They floated only about 5% of their equities to the market. Aha. Uh -huh. So the 5% of it, almost like $4.55 billion worth. And then the rest of the $95 billion worth is just, a, you know, not floated. Okay. But by referencing the price per share of this part, right, you can infer the market value of the rest of it. Okay, that's what's going on. And then, and then um, making it the largest foreign uh, listing in the US since Alibaba. And then this is a hot market. Usually, usually doing a lot of IPOs. When do you do a lot of IPOs? When precisely because uh, when it, the market is in the bubble, okay? The market is in a bubble for equity what is that? The CFO's perspective for this from Coupang, the CFO's perspective. Okay. The equity is least discounted. The easiest to raise capital. Okay. When the equity market is in a bubble. It's like everybody is going crazy about the uh, equity instead of debt. Right. Um, that's typically and that's what's happening this year and the last year, right? So Coupang CFO, this is the best time to launch our equity and then float it in the market and get the best price out of it. So get the maximum cash out of it right now. If they do uh, one year later from today, right? Um, they must have, I, I bet, uh, okay, let me see this video late uh, next year. Uh, but I bet the equity price will go down or crash like crazy. Uh, disadvantages to do IPO. So the CFO must have been happy about, uh, in this company. Okay. Um, that's something called market timing, behavioral finance idea. Okay. And then one of the symptoms of high sentiment, high market sentiment is, you know, there's a frequent IPOs going on. And then the first day uh, IPO performance is big, like da sang, da da sang, like a kind of things happening. That's a typical symptom of bubble. Yes. Um, good luck. And then Coupang sold 100 million, 30 million shares and $35 each. Yeah, higher than estimated per share price range of this, according to SEC filings. Now, all these kinds of reports have been there. And then the, one of the questions important to ask is why, why uh, US market? Even though this is virtually Korean company, um, I would say 100% of their business is in Korea, almost 100%, right? Um, why did they do it? Okay, a uh, handful of issues are there. Some of the issues, okay, could be like, uh, dual shareholding structure. Korea doesn't allow dual shareholding structure. Dual shareholding, dual, dual class, dual class shareholding, right? Dual class, class A, class B shares, right? Number of voting rights per share differs, dual class. 
Um, so the ones the owner wants to keep, I mean, owners never want to lose their you know, control over the firms, right? The managing power, right? Control right. Um, we say control rights versus voting rights. Uh, what's that? The cash flow rights. Come on. Cash flow rights. Right. Yeah. Control rights versus cash flow rights. This is about voting, right? As the company manager or the guy with the power. You want to keep as much as voting right as much as possible. But at the same time, you don't want to miss the cash inflow coming in when you do IPOs. So in the US, they say, well, you can split the shares into dual class structure so that maybe class A shares um, one voting right per share. Maybe B could have like 10 voting rights or 20 or whatever, right? Um, voting rights per share. And the thing is, um, the owners just keep the class B shares and then the other uh, non-owners, right? Non-owners uh, families or other investors doing IPO, you do the IPO for class A shares, okay? So no matter how, how much they buy and sell, your control rights as a big shareholder will not be disturbed, okay? The company will be under your control. So that's uh, partially why, you know, uh, that may be why this coupon chose uh, NYSE instead of Korean Stock Exchange, right? Um, that throws some questions to Korean investors or the regulators or journalists. Some of the uh, journalists were criticizing Korean stock market structure. Oh, you foolish guys, why did you lose this big fish of coupon to New York Stock Exchange? Oh, only if this coupon had been listed in Korean stock market instead of US. All because of your bad policy that, you know, Korea never allows dual class shareholding structure. Uh, that throws a question of corporate governance, right? Corporate governance. Um, do we need to allow dual class shareholding structure? Okay, everything has a reason for being there, right? Why do we have this kind of uh, forbidding? Why do, why do Korean governments or financial supervisory forbid corporations to have this dual class structure? Okay, why do we have this, that regulation is the more legitimate question there, okay? The question is, um, even before having dual class structure, we have abusively powerful uh, owner groups in Korea. Not just in Korea, don't take it personal, don't take it shameful Korean students, okay? Ubiquitous around the world, almost all, right? Uh, less developed countries, emerging market countries, you know, they all share the same phenomena like this royal family guys, right? The, my father established this uh, 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 company and I am the son, so I am the next king. And then um, absolute power, okay, you got the absolute power, you can do whatever you want with the uh, free cash flow of the company, okay? That's what is going on already in Korea. Enough of power so far, more than enough. And then if you add, um, dual class structure to this Korean governance situation? No way. It's gonna be like uh, um, giving, I don't know how to say it, Kim Jong-un or North Korean Kim Jong-un to excessive power of uh, like a thousand nuclear weapons or something like that. So it's like a, there is a reason why we forbid this dual class structure, but the journalist uh, doesn't say that, okay? Uh, why? Because of the advertisement expenses they get or, or advertisement revenues come from the uh, chabas and then the big corporations. So um, they are feeding them. So they have to say something favorable to this royal family. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. And that's what's going on over here. And then the, another part of the wonder, why US versus Korea as opposed to Korea? Okay. Um, one more thing is their regulation, right? Um, before doing IPOs, okay, 
one of the things the Korean regulators look intensively is the profitability. They don't typical they don't uh, buy too much of a story about the future cash flow. Okay, they care more about how much net income did you make over the past three years? Okay, make why to make sure that your company is not a bullshit company. Okay, that why do we have that kind of regulation? There is a reason why we so we say in in French word they say they say raison d'être right? raison d'être. Uh, perhaps Virginie uh, could correct me. All right, uh, raison d'être. What is that? There's a reason for such thing being there, right? Um, Korean stock market, you know, there were, could have been a lot of bullshit companies um, or, or snake oil sales companies, right? Um, that tried to do IPOs to prevent that kind of things. Uh, that regulators were heavily looking upon the net income, right? Making sure they are making uh, positive income um, in, the, in their bottom line, right? But in the U.S., that kind of regulation is uh, rather uh, relaxed, relaxed, okay? Um, they want to make sure the accounting practice is good, but they don't necessarily look at the net income performance. That's just the simple accounting uh, numbers. What matters more is your future prospect, how much the investors buy it, and then it goes all together with the communication culture. In the U.S., it's much more communicative. I tell you, my students, business is about communication. How do we get to more developed financial market? More communication, more flexible way of saying it. Uh, so far, Korea, uh, we don't, it's not as good a communication uh, culture so far, but we have to change, right? Sometimes we have to, you know, try something new, but that's a difficulty, okay? That's a difficult part. Anyway, so those uh, regulatory differences is there. Very interesting issues going on. And then by that, the coupon has been making huge losses instead of income, even in the operating level, operating income level. Um, unimaginable to do IPO in Korea, but you can do it in the US because you had, you know, Amazon as a predecessor who did that. And then the basically Amazon.com, if you look at their uh, IPO time, right? Here's the timeline. Let's see. Draw a timeline. Okay. And this is the IPO time. Let's say, uh, and then this is the EBIT operating income in Amazon. Well, at the time of IPO, it was hugely negative EBIT. And then for 10, over 10 years or something, their EBIT was hovering at negative range or something and only recently they started to have a uh, positive income okay um so at this point right huge negative operating loss korean regulators would say hell no um get away from me but the americans they are open okay uh why because they allow for more imagination okay or, or your dreams component in it right um, your ambition, okay? As long as your story makes sense, right? As long as your story makes sense, um, we're gonna buy that. So that's the approach, okay? Future, okay, my friend who is doing a business, uh, future, uh, future, right? Future, um, future. Is this future about prediction or imagination? Okay, prediction or imagination? Well, my friend doing business in Nonhyeondong is like a 천억 원대, right? It's like a, his asset is like a hundred million dollars or something in his company. He was like a very, you know, he was not from top school, right? But, you know, eventually he made his name in, in the uh, uh, web design business and then the virtual reality things like that. Um, motto is like future is not about prediction but about imagination i that's very impressive things right imagination well how much imagination you know imaginative are you right and then how much does it make sense right you can be imaginative but does it make sense is, a, is another important story as long as those two things hold true the u.s market is more open 
Korean market, no chance. So that is an interesting part. At this point of net loss, the equity analysts of the US were saying in their report, well, there's a half-life of this loss, uh, 반감기. The half of it will go away next year. The half of it will go away, away the following year, half and half like that. Eventually, if we go into the industry target uh, EBIT margin kind of things like, later, okay? So that kind of uh, valuation technique, DCF storytelling, works in America, not in Korea, based on the regulatory decisions, right? So that's a big difference. And then we have a, a lot of things to say in this chapter. So uh, let's go. Chapter outline, yeah, you see this, right? We're gonna go through all these kind of discussions, right? So wait for that. Thank you for watching.